Hi guys, Freddy here for another Retro RPG and another poll. And this week, the Grimoire for Shadowrun First Edition has won with 47% of the vote. And I kind of suspected it would because it's come close second the last couple of weeks. It's been very popular since it went into the poll three weeks ago. Anyway, I know what I'm going to put in next week, the new edition, or I've got a good suspicion what it'll be, and I kind of think it'll win. But we shall see, because you've proven me wrong in the past. Anyway, let's go over to the desktop for the Grimoire. And so this is the Grimoire for Shadowrun First Edition. Now this came out in 1990, and was actually only the fourth source book for Shadowrun. Being beaten only by the Street Samurai catalog, Sprawl Sites, uh, Paranormal Animals of North America, and then there was the Grimoire. So it came out very early in the run. And it is an expansion for the magic system. Uh, the next source book out after this was Virtual Realities, which enhanced all the matrix systems and all the hacking, the computer side of things. Then after that, we had the Riggers book, which added sort of drones and vehicles and modification rules. But this did the magic side of things. But it more than just adds to the magic rules. It introduces a bunch of stuff which shapes the world of Shadowrun to this day. Um, but we'll deal with those as we come to them. Let's have a look at the back cover. Shadowrun. Power. Some people want to study it. Some want to outlaw it. Some dreckheads even pretend it doesn't exist. But the genie's been out of the bottle since that day in 2011 when the first newborn magician in our world made the magic happen. The Grimoire is an expansion of the magic rules from Shadowrun. It includes material for designing spells, using and forming magical groups, and the enchanting of items. The Grimoire covers initiates, insect totems, and toxic shamans. Adventuring on the Metaplanes, free spirits, magical adepts, alchemy, the creation of specialized types of shamans and mages, and presents a complete section on new spells, as well as an expansion of old ones. So, we've got initiates there, which are now core to the rules, where as well as spending experience to learn new spells and increase your stats and gain power that way, you can actually initiate level and go up and increase your magic attribute, which before that had been set, or rather it been set but could go down as you got cyberware or you took um, other types of damage, which took your uh, magic down. We've got toxic shamans. So... Although Shadowrun set in a cyberpunk world and there were mention of various areas being toxic zones, there's one of the barons in Seattle in the core book, the Pulyalup barons. I beg pardon for my pronunciation as always. I am terrible pronouncing anything apart from just very basic words. But the Pulyalup barons are an area where a volcano erupted and buildings jut out and there was death and it mentioned that it was a toxic zone because the city started dumping its waste there as well but what that meant was never explained apart from it just being a giant landfill or giant dump but it affects magic so a forest spirit in Shadowrun if the forest is corrupted the you know, toxic waste is dumped there and it's corrupted then will become a toxic spirit. And these are very, very core to how Shadowrun works. And when we got the London source book, we had the nuclear spill in the north of Scotland, which led to that being a toxic zone and being filled with toxic spirits. Um, adventuring on the Metaplanes. So it really brought in the Metaplanes. Before that, Shadowrun had had just the standard existence, and then you got astral space above that where shamans and mages could send their spirit and where magic and spirits existed but the meta planes are beyond those and that was the start of what linked into the insect spirits coming in as magic increased and the connection through astral space to the meta planes grew more solid which then linked into earth dawn where the horrors had been the ultimate form of those spirits and basically made Earth impossible for normal beings to exist in in the very distant past. Free spirits. 
magical adepts. So adepts are very much core to the game now as well, where you can get physical adepts who channel their magic into their bodies to do basically martial arts, superhero type effects to gain the advantages of cyberware, but through magic. And um, you've got other adepts, sorcerer adepts and that, who give away some of the magical abilities of a full mage or shaman to gain power in other areas. Um, alchemy, the creation of specialized types of shamans and mages. Yeah, all that stuff expands out. I'll cover over the creation of magic later because I've got some notes here if I reach out and bring in some very badly handwritten notes because I spent many hours creating spells. So we start off with table of contents. As with Faza at this time, the artwork is gorgeous. It's very good looking books. Um, credits page. The Grimoire, so an introduction to the chapter. Making magicians. What makes a magician? Ask a mage, study, practice, will, years of discipline to hone the inherent power, talent into power. Ask a shaman. When the spirits speak, he must listen. So, going over the background of what makes a magic. Magic and society. So, talking how magic fits into the Shadowrun cyberpunk type world. Magic and the law, magic and business. We've got the adepts, so introducing those. So we've got shamanic adepts. A different form of adept to the shamanic adept, who the name implies must be a shaman. This adept can only cast spells or conjure spirits for which he receives a totem advantage. For example, a shamanic adept of the bear totem can only cast health spells, can only conjure forest spirits. So he doesn't have to spend as many of his starting points on becoming a mage as a full shaman, but in compensation for not spending out all those points or his penalty for not spending all those points he gains a much more limited access but you can make some very interesting characters that way physical adept dedicates his magic to improving his bodies and his abilities so we've got the powers of the physical adepts which are very very good these balanced out cyberware in a very interesting way because they are not direct copies. We've got pain resistance and we've got enhanced reactions and things like that. But we've got automatic successes where a physical adept gets successes on his dice without even rolling them. So he can have a skill of six dice and roll those six dice and come up successes. But he can have three automatic successes. So he can never fail. Um, we have killing hands. So his magic is channeled, channeled into his hands and he can do killing blows with his hands. They are a very interesting addition for the adepts and magic. Initiations, so the initiate system, where mages can go up levels, basically. It adds to their magic attribute and makes them more powerful, but we go through the ordeals that they have to pass through. And gases, so they can add a limitation on to themselves instead of having to go through one of these other things. Uh, swearing an oath or creating a thesis or conjuring up an ally spirit. We've got meta magic, which added to spells, what you could do with them. So centering can reduce the drain of magic as an act as a countermeasure. So a mage can center something and reduce the drain, allowing them to catch more magical, more powerful magic. Um, centering versus drain, quickening. You can spend experience to make a spell permanently on. Although it's still a spell and other mages can attack it and destroy it, although obviously because it's your spell you get to defend it, quickening basically takes a spell and makes it always on, which is very, very powerful as a mage can turn around and quicken an armor spell into their armored jacket. They put on the jacket, the armor spell comes on, and they have a jacket which gives them vastly more protection than like combat armor. Um, we've got dispelling, shielding, how to protect spells and other things, masking, how to hide their auras. We've got the Giasa, so different ways of um, 
penalising a mage. So for their initiate penalty, or if they're suffering from burnout, they can get yeses instead. We've got magical groups. So these help lower the costs of magic, but obviously there's penalties because you've joined a group of mages. <coughs> And we've got pre-generated magical groups here, but all the costs of creating your own and putting them into the Shadow and World. We've got enchanting, so basically making magical items. Alchemy, Arcana, we've got the different focuses which add to your magical abilities, power focuses and weapon focuses. <laughs> Exotic materials, alchemical materials. So I'm making these things a bit hard to make. Spells and spell design. Well, as I said, this is a fantastic part. Because while there's a bunch of spells in Shadowrun, they by no way cover all the bases. Um, so this goes through how you engineer your own spells. Obviously, you've got to get your Games Master permission. But you can go through here and select various stuff. So, as I said, I created a bunch of spells at the time. So what have I got here? I've got Lightning Blast, so instead of a Fireball, it's a Lightning Blast. But it has drastic effects that it can set off ammunition and fuel. So, not only do people and vehicles take damage from you casting the Lightning Blast on them, but it can cook off their ammunition. We've got Increased Gravity here, so it slows everybody down due to their strength, um, or due to them being pulled down, and they've got to make a strength roll to resist. Uh, we've got Silent Spell, we've got Darkness Spell, um, Weather Control, Fear, I thought that was quite a nice one to have, as well as a Fear Ball so you can drop it on various people. Heal Deadly ve Vehicle Wounds, so a mage can cast a spell and repair vehicles. Um, what else have I got here? Incriminating Evidence, so basically you cast it on somebody and it creates... Lipstick on their collar and long hairs stuck to them, so their wife will be suspicious of them. Um, what else we got? Oh, my last one, Custard Pie. Basically, you cast a spell and a Custard Pie mysteriously appears and slaps somebody in the face. Okay, maybe I was getting a bit silly in then. But lots of other people in my group created spells. I remember spells like Fire Donut or Mana Donut. So you would cast it centred on yourself, but the spell would have a dead zone in the middle. So you and your friends wouldn't be affected, but it would cast around you in a big donut shape and affect everybody. It allowed you to be so imaginative in a way that the original Core Shadowrun didn't. You're starting to get into the territory more of things like Ars Magica and Mage and Witchcraft, where you can make up your magic as you go. Although you have to design these spells ahead of time and spend experience to learn them. So we've got the rest of it, you know, designing spells. And then we've got astral space. So we're talking about humans on the astral, dual beings, magical entities. Just getting into more detail on how astral space works, because obviously the original rules had thought it out. But in many years of play, lots and lots more had come out. Etheric terrain. The background count. This was a fantastic fantastic addition to the game where emotion, because astral space is made up of life force, when terrible things happen, you know, the concentration camps in the former Nazi states, such horrible things happen there that magic is turbulent and unpleasant to use there and far more difficult. Um, background counts can increase in various zones as well. So a place which is very corporate can actually have a background count because nature has been pretty much destroyed. Got auras and aura reading. How to handle astral combat. Just detailing things a bit better than the rules and putting it all in one place. What else we got? Barriers, astral security. Um, meta places, place of battle. I don't think it was this book that introduced it. One of the things I did like is 
astral spirits cannot pass through living things. So, or cannot pass through dual-natured beings. So later on, I believe the corporate security book, they introduced a type of creeping ivy, which was dual-natured. So they could grow it over the outside of buildings. And basically, mages couldn't enter them because there was a physical barrier there in astral space. We've got spirits detaining those out and their special powers. Ally spirits, which basically a mage creates to help them out. A more detailed form of a nature spirit or a, a elemental. We've got watchers, just small spirits which can be created for simple tasks. We've got free spirits. So a spirit which has been cast but then managed to break itself free. They seek for a true name. Personal domain, spirit attributes, magical threats. So we're bringing up threat ratings. Toxic shamans. We've got the insect spirits being introduced, the hive, in a very basic form here, but this was so much filled in in the Universal Brotherhood book, in Queen Euphoria, in so many other great adventures. But this was the start of insect spirits being introduced. And then we've got appendices, so magicians and tech, spell damage, um, new totems. Magical prices. A glossary of terms. The spell directory, so detailing all the spells in the game in one place from the original source book and added to from here. A table of spells, so you can quickly look things up. And the index at the back. And we've got an advert for Paranormal Animals of North America and Shadowrun DMZ, which I've covered before, the board game of fighting on motorbikes and small skirmish combat for Shadowrun. Anyway, that's the Grimoire. It's a fantastic addition for first edition Shadowrun, and it added so much to the game world which hadn't really been seen before. It really fleshed out Shadowrun and enhanced the game in so, so many ways. But anyway, I think I've witted on for quite long enough as usual. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment below as it does me huge favours with the YouTube algorithm. But as always, most of all, you look after yourselves and I'll catch you later. Bye now.